Well, the impeachment proceedings are underway, and today we're just going to take a look at the best possible outcome, the worst possible outcome, and what Bill Whittle hopes for the future of this proceeding in this country. I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, I just finished listening as we record this uh, to the opening statements by uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and the leader of the minority, uh, Chuck Schumer, as uh, they opened up the impeachment proceedings against uh, Donald J. Trump, 45th President of the United States. Um, and you've heard the narrative that uh, Republicans are basically in league with the White House, uh, trying to use their majority status to steamroll the process, to accelerate it, um, and further add to the obstruction of which President Trump is accused. Uh, Democrats, they say, are merely chasing the truth. They want a trial with witnesses and documents, and who can oppose that? And uh, doesn't the um, and they don't trust. Senator McConnell to allow witnesses and documents later. So they, so Senator Schumer is going to propose some amendments to the proceedings up front, uh, which Republicans, even uh, people like Senator uh, Mitt Romney, who wants witnesses, will oppose this up front uh, because he believes that later in the process, should that become necessary, they'll be able to call them. Um, all of that uh, going on, Bill, in the midst of what is supposed to be a rather somber constitutional process, even Nancy Pelosi has called this something that is deserving of much prayer. Uh, Bill, I guess let's start with the positive, and I know this is a challenge sometimes, but what is the best possible outcome for the Congress, the country, and the presidency to this process, as you see it? There is no positive outcome for this. There's none. The, the, I knew we could start on an upbeat tone. <laughs> well, well, look, man, the, the, the Democrats have turned, have not, you know, we were talking earlier when this thing started about how they had destroyed, essentially destroyed the mechanism of impeachment as a serious, um, you know, bipartisan tragedy that, have, that befalls the nation. So that's gone. But one of the other things that they've destroyed now more than anything, really, is is that when when government was in operation prior to this, you could at least hold on to some shred that what was actually happening behind all of these arcane rituals and the my friend, the the senator from the great state of that, and the distinguished gentleman and all, all this stuff, you could at least hope that behind there was some kind of um integrity left uh you know but 250 years is is a long time to uh to run on batteries i guess um watching watching what they're doing is so unbelievably depressing to me and i i just i just sometimes i just filled with sometimes despair overcomes my rage and my rage is pretty high on this one scott um, watching this posturing and, and basically, look, let's just, let's just completely understand this. Hunter Biden is accused of, of being corrupt and his father, Joe, is accused of influence peddling. It's investigated by an, uh, a, a prosecutor in the Ukraine. Donald Trump calls the president of the Ukraine and says, is this true? Can you tell me more about that? Can you find out about that? Therefore, he's impeached. Uh, now, are you saying tell, that there was a formal uh, investigation underway already, Bill? And, and no, no, no. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying this is what is known to have happened. Okay, there's You're no. Saying there, this is what conservatives say should have happened to Hunter no, Biden. This, and no, Joe no, Biden. no, 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 no. No, I'm saying what happened was Hunter Biden was in a situation where he was taking taking money to do nothing except for peddle his influence. A prosecutor in the Ukraine decided to investigate this. Joe Biden put pressure on that prosecutor to get off the case. And Donald Trump called the president and said, could you find out if that's true for me? Therefore, Donald Trump has to be impeached. That's what factually happened. And I, I never, ever cease to be appalled. I'm always amazed because just when you think you're on the ground, you don't know how you could go lower than that. But they find a way. And so now uh, Donald Trump is basically on trial for the things that Hunter and Joe Biden did. While meanwhile, Joe Biden struts around the country um, and, uh, and, and gets away with it in the same way that Hillary Clinton got away with it, in the same way that Bill Clinton got away with it, in the same way that they all got away with it. And I 
am running out of there was a there was a a poster uh, a handmade protest sign at the um at the gun rights rally in Virginia a couple of days ago and it was just made by some guy and it was holding it up and he said I'd rather be an american than a democrat and 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 that's how i feel and and it gets worse every day. So, Bill, if I open the show with the question, what's the best, uh, most positive outcome you can imagine? It almost seems like we're segueing into me saying, OK, Bill, so the worst possible outcome is the best outcome you can imagine. The best possible outcome would have been for uh, this to not happen in the first place, for there to have been some sort of integrity um, and some sense of, of of patriotism among the Democrats who knew that this thing was inflated from the beginning. That was off the table to begin with, obviously. The next best possible outcome would they, would have been that they bring these sham charges and there was enough integrity left in the House of Representatives for significant numbers of Democrats to say no, but that has that ship has sailed. The next best possible outcome would have been for for uh, Nancy Pelosi to take the the uh, charges uh, over to the Senate and have it be dismissed out of hand in three and a half minutes by um, by the Republican Senate. But that's gone. Thanks to guys like Mitt Romney, who I spent a fair amount of my career defending as a good man who just didn't know much about politics. But I have to tell you, I don't believe that anymore at all. I, I And I haven't for quite a while now. Uh, if, if Mitt if Mitt Romney is saying he wants to call witnesses, it's because Mitt Romney does not think his chances at the presidency are over yet. And I have some news for Mitt Romney in that regard. Um, and then the next best possible case would have been a speedy, a speedy conclusion that there was no evidence here and so on. And so the best possible conclusions are sailing, you know, just departing into the sunset one by one as we speak. At this point, you know, at this point, what, what 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 can I say? Well, that's that, what that I'm this asking. Whole process, you know, it's kind of can, so, okay. So let's, so let's at just this point be grown now, up about it, though, Bill. We are where we are. Whether you like the fact that we're here, no, I or understand not. that. So we are where we are. That. What what's the best thing that could happen from here going forward? A speedy trial and an acquittal. Okay. Fair enough. Denial of this whole idea of witnesses and, and the rest of it. The sense that if the House did not put together enough of a case to stand on its own, then it's not the Senate's job to make the House's case. And for the House to insist that it is the Senate's job is a clear overstepping of the boundaries on, on the part of Nancy Pelosi and, and on the part of Schumer as well for saying that this sort of thing is acceptable. It is the Senate's responsibility now. If the, if the House of Representatives could not put together a compelling case in the articles of impeachment, then that alone is enough reason to dismiss them. It's not Nancy Nancy Pelosi's place, and it's not Chuck Schumer's place, to say that the Senate now needs to pick up this investigation and finish the job that the Repub that the Democrats in the House couldn't do. It that would be the best case now. Well, but what's probably going to happen? Go what's probably going to happen is enough people are going to buy this. Well, uh, you know, we should have witnesses and so on, which is exactly, precisely, exactly, precisely why we have the we had we had in the past in the history of this country we had the presumption of innocence because without the presumption of innocence, what you get is you get a jacuzzi kind of point your finger at somebody and then the wheels of the of the inquisition continue until anything that can be turned up is then used as evidence against you if you decide to fight back against the charges that you're a heretic the fact that you're fighting back is evidence that you're a heretic and i have had enough of this so i'm watching best case scenarios just sail out the window and at this point now i am just filled with a bloody minded revenge i mean seriously and i'm talking about a political revenge let's be clear about this i've never advocated anything else but i would like to see every single democrat in the on the federal level removed from office just voted out of office the way the the constitution uh uh allows us to. I know that's not going to happen either, but at the very least now, if you want to know what my best case scenario now is, my best case scenario now is that after this tragedy uh, and this travesty continues to unwind, the best case scenario will be that other conservatives and Republicans feel as angry about this as I do and are determined to punish these people at the polls in November in a way they have never been punished before. That's what, that's what the best case scenario is now. And so basically, Republicans retake the House in the fall uh, of 2020. And, yeah, uh, by the a Senate 435 to zero majority. <laughs> well, that would be extraordinary, would it not? Um, would it not? So I, I think we've already covered enough of the territory of the, of the worst possible scenario here. Um, and let me just ask then, uh, and this is a separate idea here that I'm striving for, is 
what's your actual prediction about how this thing will play out? What do you, you know, if you had to look at it and just say with cold calculation, regardless of political affiliation, where do you see this going and uh, and what would the outcome actually be like? Do you think that that best possible scenario with the sweep of the House uh, is something realistic or do you have a more modest ambitions for this? What I what I want is different than what I expect. Um, what is still possible, barely, is that a member of the Senate will finally, a Republican, will finally, finally, finally wake up to the fact that the entire trap lies in allowing this minutia to continue. The entire trap of it, and we fall into this trap every single time, is we start talking about it as a political issue rather than a moral issue. If it was a moral issue, which is what it is, one swing of the sword could cut the Gordian knot and that would be the end of it. It would simply be the end of it. What has to happen is that the, the, is that Mitch McConnell and a majority of Republicans have to basically stand up and say this is a witch hunt has been from start to finish, and we are not going to we are not going to dignify this thing with a second more of our time than it absolutely takes to to, to do it. This business about uh, discussing whether or not we need witnesses, no, vote it out. No, it's not the Senate's job to make the case. Bill, that I, doesn't I think seem I'm, like that doesn't seem like a, a a declaration of a moral imperative. It seems more like dodging the moral question to basically no, it is say not. we're not going to no, answer that no, question. No, it is not. Because it no, could be it a witch not. hunt no, 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 that no, found no. a witch. It is a witch hunt without a witch. No, but I'm saying it could be a witch hunt that found a witch. It's not a witch hunt that found a witch because if it was a witch hunt that had found a witch, there would be Republican votes on the impeachment um, articles in the in the House. And you and I would be having an entirely different discussion if Donald Trump had committed the kind of, of flagrant abuses of power and, and impeachable offenses, we would have an entirely different discussion now, entirely. So there's no witch here. And the, the point I'm making is, is to go ahead and have a witch hunt result in a trial with the with the with the outcome of saying, well, this will prove that the witch is innocent, is not, is not the way to do this. The, because, because even if you succeed in this case, you have now eliminated the presumption of innocence and replaced it with the pointing of a finger. And so the only way to salvage this situation is for somebody on the Republican ticket to have the moral clarity to stand up and say this entire thing is a disgrace and an outrage and we are not going to bury ourselves in this minutia designed to prolong a process that should have been over in three and a half minutes. We are not going to do it. We are not going to fall into the trap of making this into a sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph analysis of everything that Donald Trump did in defense against these outrageous charges in the first place. And furthermore, and furthermore, we are going to launch a deep investigation into, into Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and, and all the rest of it. And we are getting that thing underway as of an hour ago. So that's what I would like to see happen. Am I going to see this happen? I have no doubt I will not see it happen. What I'm sure will happen is more and more people will fall into this into this um, this trap of well, if he's really innocent, then he's got nothing to fear. Think about that. That's actually the sentence. That's the actual operational sentence here. Every totalitarian government, every totalitarian movement in the history of mankind has used that as their defense. Hey. Okay, so we're tapping their phones. Okay, so we're spying on them with spy satellites. Hey, okay, so we've read their emails. Okay, so we've um, so we've bugged their bedrooms. But if they're not guilty, they've got nothing to fear. This is this is how this is how tyranny is justified. And this is exactly what they're doing now. We're watching this happen in the United States of America with the president of the United States. The attitude now is, well, if he's not guilty, why is he fighting so hard? If he's not guilty, why not have witnesses that'll exonerate him? If he's not guilty, why not? If he's not guilty, why not? And there is the end of it. It's the end of it. If you go to the why not, if he's innocent, why not? Then you have the presumption of guilt. And his and his and this trial will be to prove his innocence. And that's exactly what's happening. He is presumed guilty by the House, and now the trial is to have Donald Trump 
pro provide a defense of his innocence. He doesn't have to. He is innocent by assumption. Everybody in this country is innocent by assumption. Donald Trump does not have to defend himself. He doesn't have to bring charge. He doesn't have to bring evidence showing that he didn't do anything. He is innocent until proven guilty. And the fact that the, that the House and the Democrats are calling for further witnesses, further investigations is proof of the fact that there is not enough of a charge here to stick. And this is the this is the part of it that's just enough to destroy your soul and everything you believe in is this entire idea of the presumption of innocence that is so critical. It's so important. It's the single most important thing in our legal judicial system. Gone. Gone. Because some harpy from, from San Francisco with 75 successive plastic surgeries has decided that she doesn't want to give up power. And so she's going to destroy the presumption of innocence in this country in order to get some political points for her miserable, pathetic bang of, uh, gang of criminals and, and that she calls a political party. And I have had enough of watching this. If anything is going to come out of this, somebody is going to have to ring that bell of moral clarity and simply state what is going on here, why it's going on, what the damage has been, what the damage will be, and simply say this is going to end now because in America, you are innocent until proven guilty. The House has not proven him guilty, period, full stop, throw it out. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, in preparation for this show, I do a lot of reading and, and watching of news programs. I, uh, I read primarily uh, the New York Times and the Washington Post. I watch primarily CNN and MSNBC. My objective being I want to better understand the position of those who are generally opposed to the conservative point of view. What you don't see on any of those uh, places, especially on TV, you don't see anybody from the point of view that Bill Whittle has stating it with force and clarity the way he just did. And that is why so many people have become members of BillWhittle.com. That's why this enterprise has been able to continue in the face of a an onslaught of progressive narrative that pervades the mainstream media. And that's why you can join today and become a member and become a supporter of this program. If you'd like to hang out with people who enjoy that kind of forceful, uh, declarative, simple sentences of uh, truth, then you may want to join us on our cruise in May. Uh, we're going May 15th through the 18th, a three-night cruise aboard the Navigator of the Seas, a Royal Caribbean ship. We're going to head for the Bahamas out of the Port of Miami, stop uh, for a day at a private island, in enjoy some live productions of these shows, some Q&A sessions, as well as some casual conversations over food and drinks and laughter and just a lot of fun. If you haven't signed up for that yet, again, go to BillWhittle.com and click on the big ship. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members for making this happen.